some of the topics we didn't really talk about in class so far, specifically with respect to Bitcoin, is the idea of multi-stage bills. And that's a really powerful feature uh, when it's about minimizing Docker image size, for example, or container size rather, especially if you run large numbers of them. So, and I'll show you uh, that in a specific example because it's very applicable uh, in the context of Go. So, uh, as the easiest thing, uh, let's go first back to our uh, good old application. You recall that we had um, the application. And um, as far as it stands right now, we can simply run it by saying sudo. So it's detached, it's running in the background, it's, uh, doing stuff in the background, so building image. Um, executing this and then bringing it to individual containers, um, or rather building containers. Uh, here is uh, DB1 and uh, Web1 as dependent containers. And then I can just check that they're actually working. So we get some response uh, from the underlying database and gets uh, checked uh, with the other properties, but still in the Mongo database that was persistent anyway. So that successfully works. Um, so we can just uh, bring that image down again. So just that's a good um, starting point to ensure that all the functionality that we developed actually uh, works so far. So, however, if you now look under images, you will find that we have a considerable size. So um, for this was the one we were just built, uh, the latest one. Um, but foremostly noteworthy is um, that the uh, Golang image that we're building from, so uh, Golang 192 stretch in this example, is 733 megabytes large, and our ready, uh, our final image is about 770 megabytes, so which is considerable overhead uh, in terms of the Go environment that's uh, uh, part of the image. So if you can imagine you're building multiple of those, you have a uh, massive overhead um, to deal with, certainly more than you should in an average application, thinking about instantiating, spinning it up, and so on. It's tragic for our case, but if you think, uh, thinking beyond uh, what we're doing now, um, then it will be even uh, more financially challenging. So, um, but if you compare, for example, to, with the conventional application uh, using run, go, build, and we check the size here, we're dealing with about seven megabytes. So, what one click can do is pretty much the same. Um, so, and uh, if we run this uh, variable, so I need to export uh, that it's picked up in the executable, we can just simply run it and we should get uh, a, a running system. It doesn't have any content, but it should still work because it's um, currently not linked against the MongoDB database. Um, on that note, it's probably worthwhile briefly to explore what I um, had some modifications to the um, student DB for sake of uh, convenience right now. So, um, um, in contrast to the previous iterations, I'm now checking for the existence of DB host as an environment variable. If it's empty, then it will just automatically use the in-memory database. In all other cases, it will try to connect to the MongoDB instance. So I did this as a convenience uh, mechanism, so I don't have to pick up all environment variables, spin an external um, MongoDB up, and so on. So it's enough just to specify the port, and we have an in-memory version of that database. So this actually runs. So the idea is, okay, why can't we just um, go ahead and change the Docker just to run um, this functionality um, locally instead of building from the um, larger um, Docker file that has all those different functionalities? Can't we just be a simple, uh, straightforward, and just, um, um, yeah, basically only copy the file that we actually need? into the um, image and then run it from scratch, basically. And um, deleting the and opening a new. And we can precisely do that. So let's try that. So we can run um, from scratch. Well, which we are immediately 
directory um, and then we can from the Manually into the directory and following this, so this would make for much more seemingly compact Docker file, but also a much more compact image. So if we try to build this right now, build this T um, scratch, I'll just call it simple. So just pick up the Docker file, build the image, et voila, it's done. So what happened here, which um, built from scratch, created a work directory, or say, um, changed the work directory, added the executable, and then added the um, default command for execution. If we now check under images, we should have a oh rather um, small images, 7.32 megabytes. So pretty much exactly the Docker, uh, sorry, the Go executable itself. So, um, for the sake of trying it out, let's run it. We need to give it a name. We call it um, student scratch. We need to specify the port as environment variable. Port to which we want to post, and obviously the So, and what we get is this here. So, standard init linux.go uh, and 185 says, well, the executed user process costs uh, no such file or directory. So, that would leave us to suggest that, well, hmm, actually, we probably did a mistake by copying that file here. So, in directory, copy the um, And it turns out it's actually not the actual issue. The issue here is really more, more related to um, the fact that we are um, that the binaries in Go are not as independent as we think they are. So if you want to check dependency linked uh, libraries of particular files in Linux, you can do that by running init go. You'll find that studentdb in this case actually uh, links a considerable number of um, uh, libraries, so like uh, here pthread for example, libc and so on. So quite a set of libraries. Deal with this, uh, you will need to um, use statically compile uh, basically a library without relying any sort of external uh, dependencies. And the command for this is um, relies on uh, parameter for the Go compiler, including specialization um, for artificial operating system in Linux and various. Flex that the dependencies and the output file is called. Let me run this now, take may take a bit. We should um, get an executable that's rather of rather small size. There we go. And we can try the same as we did before with this. Um, with this uh, new binary that we just built. So we just tag the uh, scratch image to two now, so we have a different image. So the same thing, we're building the image, adding student db, and again it's done. And let's run um, another instance of that. Let's see if I um, see if it works or not. Um, so everything is set to two, and yes, voila. It works, so now it's purely running off um, the simple binary um, using the in-memory database in this example I didn't use the dash d option so it's um, still effective. 
So if we look at the um, now that the image size is rather small. So this uh, seems to be one way of doing it. However, the whole um, workflow or tool chain is now a bit broken because it re uh, requires some sort of manual interference or using bash scripts or other scripts to automate this compilation, right? Because uh, we no longer can rely really on the uh, image for us to do. Otherwise, we have these heavy libraries that again built into the Docker file. So in the solution to actually deal with this, is um, to do a, what's called a, a multi-stage build. And that's precisely what we are what we are about to uh, do now. So um, instead of starting with the from scratch image, we actually look back into what we did before, and that was basically building having a builder image that allows us that allows us to specify a build environment, so which we tag with an alias builder here, and um, does all the heavy lifting for us. So we uh, basically All the compilation related activities in that image and leave the execution to this directory. So now we basically go to change it into a local go um, path. Uh, At this stage, um, now we can execute execute the activation the GPO zero the output file. So this is the first image. So the first image is basically building again um, a statically compiled binary and the second image then um, uses that uh, second, but before that I will be uh, and specify So um, this is the from scratch image, so it's the second one, so we leave that basically as it is, but we refine that a bit because we need to um, clarify where the binary is coming from. This is no longer but in, in, instead of that, um, we are actually copying it. So the work directory is still the root directory in the scratch image, so it's totally empty, um, but this time we copy from um, go source. So we now copying from the um, original builder image from the corresponding location. and copying it to the local uh, work directory, which is uh, just uh, root. So if the syntax is correct. Just double check. So the key thing here is the reference to the builder. And obviously, you need to be labeled here. So this is the multi-stage build process. Um, 
image that we're building that performs certain tasks and the second one that consumes the output of the um, first image. But it looks good. Um, I think we can just give that a go and see if the execute. Again, we do use the normal build command, so it's no need to have a another uh, build or anything like that. So we just see how it goes. Um, so initially, it's now ten steps. We see that um, it consumes from Golang as builder. Uh, it runs go get, meaning gets the sources uh, from the um, uh, GitHub location. And then now runs the uh, compilation. So the work directory runs the uh, corresponding compilation in that work directory. Again, that very same command that we used um, on the command line previously. It takes a bit. And after that step, it hands over to the second container. So uh, from scratch, it's creating a new um, um, container here copies the content from the uh, previous container towards the local um, work directory and then uh, initiates the execution. So that's basically a new image that we have here right now and we can now run this uh, image directly. Now this should be labeled so let's see how it goes. And yeah, we should be able to see the running in-memory database right now. So it's a quite efficient way of, for us to reduce um, the size. So just to double check if it works, get works. So there's nothing in there in the database because it's in memory right now. Um, but if we send something to it, we should also get its content. So it still works properly. And if we uh, turn on the images now, specifically the one we built right now, we're dealing with the size of um, 7.27 megabytes. So 1% of the original image size. So it's a reduction and from an uh, execution point of view again the docker file has changed but uh, other than that um, we shouldn't see any change in the overall behavior so if we go up and run sudo expose up we shouldn't see any change in behavior. So that's the neat part about separating the uh, underlying individual containers or their definition from the uh, overall Docker Compose command. So it's good that we've now integrated um, the overall system service um, or uh, overall application, if you like, is unaffected by any changes there. So we should now be able to actually retrieve um, the student still from um, this time it's actually retrieving it from the MongoDB, from the persistent uh, data store in MongoDB, uh, and the system's readily accessible. So, but um, we have uh, reduced, we have optimized the system considerably and reduced specifically the uh, web container here. So that's the key. And we'll find that there's a considerable um, that has been used to actually build the builder image and this is the change that we can see here in the image right now. If you are, uh, want to know further details, um, there's really worthwhile um, overview in the documentation for uh, multi-stage builds. So um, further options, uh, some other elements of, about the semantics and so on. The only th important thing to bear in mind here is that you need to run Docker 17 uh, or higher um, in order to have support for multi-stage builds. So an older version that doesn't work, it will um, um, stop executing as soon as it detects a second from statement or um, from instruction in the uh, Docker file. 